Welcome back, troglodytes, to your daily dose of guitar information, the Trogly's Guitar Show. I wanted to share this thing that I found on eBay. Actually, I think a viewer of the show sent it to me like a couple of months ago. So, you know this guitar, Rocky. We did a full review and demo on it. It was a custom shop recreation of the original. Somebody was a bass player and decided they wanted their own custom jazz bass Rocky. So that's exactly what they did here. And I think it looks fantastic on this body shape. I mean, it's similar to a Stratocaster, but I love the painted pickups here. They even tried to match the same thing as the Stratocaster and the pick guard with the Go Cat Go and Bebop Balula. Because it's not as easy as just looking at the Stratocaster and, you know, morphing it over exactly because these are slightly differently laid out and I think it turned out great. Then you get to the headstock, Mr. Eric Clapton. Now they didn't get that exactly right, but you know, it's close enough, close enough. You get the Rocky here, but they, they did pretty okay for just, you know, winging it. But this started life as a Squire jazz bass, so I'm not sure how much that'd be. Probably, what, 400 bucks, so they're asking a $400 premium for it. I don't think it's that bad. I mean, can you paint this yourself? I think that looks fairly professionally done. I think if I was a big Beatles fan and I played bass a lot, I, I wouldn't care. 800 bucks, I think that's fair. I'll put a link in the description to that one. And now we have this guitar. I've had a few people custom commission private help sessions on this guitar asking me, is this the legit finished transparent blue for 1981? In my opinion, no. I think the seller is a little bit confused on this one, but I'd be interested to hear the viewer's opinion on this. So you look through this whole thing and it's kind of like a really faded out bluish green finish. It would have originally started as a darker blue color and then it's just kind of faded over the years. I mean, you can see that the binding has kind of aged in certain areas, but it also has areas where it's worn off. This was clearly a heavily used instrument. And you've got a little bit of a mix match hardware going on like you've got the chrome studs which means it likely started life as a chrome hardware or they were replaced at some point in time but then the rest is gold these knobs are definitely non-original but then when you get to the back it's natural okay so this looks right for like a natural les paul custom they would just have a back that looked like that everything's looking good and then the headstock, yeah, that looks exactly like the way I would expect it to when it's been aged, so it's all yellowed over. That nut has definitely been replaced, and you can tell it's been refretted because there's no fret nibs, and those are larger frets. But then when you get to the back, that's where things get kind of confusing. You can tell that there was some sort of a finish in this serial number at one point in time. It's either that or it's just dirt and grime built up. Or was the back of the neck also a blue color at one point in time and it's faded out? It's kind of tricky to say. But then you get here, and the reason why the seller says it's the original finish is because you can see a non-faded blue that was hiding underneath our pickups here. And yes and no. Just because you have that finish under there does not mean it's the original. My best guess as to what this thing started life as was just a regular natural Les Paul Custom that somebody oversprayed a blue color on top of because they didn't like the color. Because you can kind of see that original natural finish right here in all the wear areas before it goes down to the bare wood. Now I guess that could be like a primer coat, but I mean you very presently see it here and there. It's not just the natural maple showing in all those spots. And the other thing that leads me to believe that is almost everything has been modified on this guitar. You can tell the pickup covers have been taken off at one point in time, the complete refret that we were talking about earlier, the plastics have been changed and they're cracking, so it was probably changed in the late 80s because the late 80s pickup rings are pretty prone to cracking. And the pickups have been in and out in general, the wiring's all been messed up, so if somebody were to refinish the top, they would have to take the pickups out. So that doesn't bode well for it. You don't see any type of finish in here, like not even along these areas. So you can tell that's likely the original finish back here. And all that, I've never heard of a translucent blue Les Paul Custom. Now, there were a bunch of custom orders and stuff, and this is slightly before the Custom Shop Edition decal era. So is it possible? Yes, but I would need more proof in order to suggest to somebody to buy this because almost everything has been replaced on this guitar. So it wouldn't be that far-fetched to think that they would also change the finish of the guitar. That's the way I see it. So at a price of 4,000 bucks, I've been telling people to steer away from this one personally, but hey, maybe you like the way that it's aged. You don't care that it might've been refinished. 
I'll let you decide that for yourself. But speaking of cool limited edition finishes that did exist in the early 80s, take a look at this thing, Les Paul Standard Bahama Blue. I've yet to see a Les Paul Custom in Bahama Blue. I've heard of them, but I haven't actually seen one show up. You mainly find these on Les Paul Standards and some of like the V2s. But this is a beautiful finish. I hope one day to find a custom, but why I wanted to feature this one besides just the color is it has been heavily, heavily modified and used. I mean, look at all the finish checking. This is natural wear and tear. You can see the way that the Bahama blue finish originally looked. It was a very bright, vibrant blue color. And then it's just been worn down into the mahogany areas here. But speaking of being worn down, <laughs> they shaved the heel down here in order to get better upper fret access. And they actually did that really well. There's a video attached to this listing. Apparently they did it because his fingers were so short he couldn't get them up and over the fretboard. And naturally, that's just going to be much more comfortable to play. It looks a little bit strange because you're seeing the neck exposed way farther than you're used to and a different wood grain showing on your mahogany back here. But hey, it's kind of cool. And they sanded off the finish on the neck to reveal some beautiful flame maple figuring. And they just kind of left the finish alone as kind of like a faux stinger. And the tuners have been replaced a time or two, but it was a Kalamazoo made Les Paul standard. And it looks like we might have had some sort of a locking nut on it at some point in time too. But the neck measurements are ridiculous. 0.73 at the first fret? That's crazy. Isn't like the smallest ones that we ever find like 0.79, like 0.8 for like the super thin necks? They had to have shaved that down some. But then by the 12th fret, it's about 0.9. That seems about right. And our electronics actually look pretty halfway decent in here. And this one was refretted with jumbo frets. It's just kind of a cool finish. I would love to document a Bahama Blue one day because they're just cool. And to find a Les Paul Custom in this finish would make me really, really happy. That's kind of what I've been holding out for. And lastly, while we're talking about limited edition colors, here is a Les Paul Standard. Okay, so... It didn't leave the factory like this, no. I've had this saved in my watch list for quite some time, but I recently had somebody uh, ask me about this one if they should buy it, because they just happened to kind of like the artwork. But take a look at these big bejeweled knobs. Like, those are ridiculous, but I kind of like them in an ironic way. But basically, this started life as a pretty rare pewter Les Paul standard. That's the official color for silver back in this era and they just did this painting over top of it, the last name of Bird. But here you can see the original finish. Like this was a rare guitar. Sure, it's all beat up and whatnot, but collectors would still want this because of the custom finish. But unfortunately, somebody used it as a painting canvas and you know, it's been heavily worn, but the price, it's not that bad. Like that's what I would expect to pay for a regular one. So you do have a premium for the rare finish and then you've got a devaluation for the paint job on the top. But if you just happen to like the paint job, I really think this guy has price cut it down to a point where it kind of makes sense. I think the only reason it hasn't sold is it's located in the Netherlands and some people might be too scared to import it back to the country. I mean, if you really, really hated this, you might be able to get that off with the right paint thinner, assuming that the original finish is still under here somewhere. It looks like there's a little bit too much of a wear area right here to fully restore it, but it could be cool to the right guy. A couple of weeks ago, Fender came out with a really expensive case for 600 bucks. They named it the CEO flight case with wheels. <laughs> now, my first reaction to this was 600 bucks for a case, but then you look at it. OK, it's one of those really good flight cases. Like if you are having to check a guitar as luggage within a plane, you probably want something similar to this. It seems to be very similar in construction as the Eddie Van Halen case that we saw in this review and demo. It's got the two butterfly latches with a vegan leather handle. And I thought one of the nicest features of this is these things are always ridiculously heavy, like 30, 40 pounds. So having two wheels on the ends, it's like, yep, that's worth it. You don't have to lug that whole thing around. And the easier it is for a package handler to move a case, the less likely it's going to get damaged. But as far as the interior, looks very similar to the other fender cases on the inside. It might be a higher quality foam, and of course you have so much room along each side. I thought it was just kind of cool that they're offering that stock from the factory. 
normally stuff like this you have to custom order so knowing that you can get a stratocaster or a telecaster to fit in one of these is kind of nice so as far as the specs you can read those right here I don't personally have a Strat or Tele that I would want this for, but the option's there if you have a really nice vintage piece that you need to ship overseas, or you just want to make sure it's safe. It's like the uh, Gibson Calton cases. I mean, you look at this and you just laugh at the price point. <laughs> $1,200 for a case? That just doesn't make sense for most people to purchase. Only if you have a very sentimental guitar, you're flying a lot with it. Or it's like a vintage Les Paul Burst. But they've got them for mandolins, banjos, ES-335s, Les Pauls, SGs, and of course your Hummingbird and J-45 type guitars. But you can actually go to their website and see them demonstrate how they'll throw it off the roof, you know, take a blowtorch to it. I mean, anything that could possibly go wrong. <laughs> they've tried to prevent it from damaging the guitar, even waterproofness. I'm not sure if it's like, you know, you can submerge it in the ocean for 20 hours, but getting run over by a truck, yeah, looks like it. In more ways than one. <laughs> when is that ever going to happen? I guess maybe loading an airplane it could happen. But after all that, that acoustic guitar was just fine. But anyways, they make violin cases, pretty much a whole bunch of different stuff. But that's just the signature series one. But what I find funniest here is you could actually get them to make you one for a Corvus. <laughs> Corvuses don't even cost that much. I'm not sure who would want that, but the fact that they offer it makes me like this company. In fact, look here, even a US-1 they have it for. Like, what on earth? Or a Gibson Sonics. <laughs> Those are like 600 buck guitars at max, but just in case it's special to you, they'll make it for you. The only thing I kind of find weird on the Gibson website is they say it is safe to withstand drops of up to 9 feet. Going back to their promotional video, that was more than 9 feet. Maybe it's just different for Gibson style guitars. But 9 feet is pretty good, but there might be a few situations where that might exceed it slightly. Alright Troglodytes, I hope you enjoyed tonight's episode. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and we will catch you tomorrow on the next episode. Take care.